What are your files? What are these phase issues that you worry about so much? Phase issues, phase issues. What are these phase issues that people complain about so? And by people, I mean audiophiles, hi-fi enthusiasts, and people actively involved in music recording and production. All kinds of audio. Where this is coming from is that if I ask a question on audio issues, there's that word again, in my videos, there'll be a rush to comment phase issues, as though those two magic words can explain anything thoroughly and completely and put an end to any further investigation or discussion. <laughs> Sometimes the expression phase issues just comes up out of the blue, like the monoblock power amps I reviewed recently that will inevitably suffer from phase issues, according to some commenters. The thing is, though, that phase issues are a real thing, or things. But we can do better than pin all the woes of the audio world on them. What is this phase business, then? OK, two identical 1 kHz sine waves. Add them together. We get a 1 kHz sine wave at twice the level, plus 6 dB, if you like. The period of a 1 kHz sine wave is 1 millisecond. So what if we delay one of the sine waves by half a millisecond? Oops. <laughs> Where one is high, the other is low. Add them together, and we get nothing. Stone cold silence. Stone cold. <laughs> we call this a phase difference of 180 degrees. We can also get this by inverting one of the sine waves, but I'll leave this case for a future video. OK, that was half a millisecond's delay. What about delaying one of the sine waves a quarter of a millisecond? They add, but not as much as 6 dB. Mathematical commenters will tell us how many dBs, no doubt. and. Pedantic commenters will tell us that a phase difference of 90 degrees is called being in. <laughs> so from this, we get that a pair of sine waves can reinforce each other, cancel each other out, or something in between, according to their relative phase. And their relative phase will be due to a delay, which, in the simplest case, will be somewhere between zero and the period of the sine waves. That's enough of that. How will this affect us in real life? Real sounds, not just sine waves. The issue, issue starts when we have a signal, and a copy of that signal that's delayed in time. Mix them together. What we get is comb filtering, where we get nulls in the signal where some frequency that's contained in the original signal happens to be 180 degrees out of phase in the delayed version. I made a video a while ago on this with demonstrations, which I'll link below. For now, what we need to know is that it happens when a signal mixes with a delayed copy of itself and the frequency affected corresponds to the duration of the delay, and also whole number multiples of that frequency, where there will be similar inversions. So how can this happen? I'll give you a few examples. I'm sure that commenters will fill in any that I miss. The classic example for sound travelling in air is recording speech while seated at a table. The microphone picks up the speech directly and also the reflection from the table's surface. The longer path for the reflection creates a delay. And hey presto, we have comb filtering, the classic phase issue indeed. Whether this sounds bad or whether you can hear it at all is variable. For myself, right now, I should have an absorber on my desk, but sometimes I forget, and this is one of those occasions. But it hasn't killed my channel yet. But according to the immutable laws of science, without the absorber, and even with it, because it isn't perfect, at least some comb filtering is present. Tell you what. I'll put it back where it should be. OK, done that. Another issue relates to recording. Let's suppose you have a solo clarinet and you record it with a pair of mics spaced apart. Regular watchers of my channel will see what I did there. <laughs> if the soloist stays rock solid still right in the middle between the mics, there's no problem. If the soloist is offset towards one side, then as well as a level difference, which is not a phase issue, there's a difference in the path length to each mic. So there's a delay in the more distant mic, and phase issues. It's worse if the soloist moves because the null frequencies change, and you get, you literally get, the phasing effect used exactly as such in the psychedelic 1960s. This also happens in public address, where there's a speaker and an audience. You'll often see two microphones. They can be placed very close together, in which case one mic is a backup. Good plan. If they're spaced apart, the aim is to handle when the speaker faces left, then faces right, or anywhere in between. Yes, there's a point to this, but it's a compromise, because you will get phasing as the speaker moves. 
This is also a known thing in musical theatre where the leading lady and leading man are singing their tender love duet from very close range. They each have a mic. Phase issues. So that's sound, acoustic sound travelling in air. What about signals? Well, again, there are situations where a signal can mix with a delayed version of itself. Music mastering, for instance, or even processing an individual track. There's often a case to process different bands of frequencies differently. Then when you mix the signals back together, the phase responses of the filters you use to separate the bands will cause cancellations. You can use linear phase filters, but they come with a different set of problems. But you're just an enthusiast. You have a simple, decent, no complications system, no phase issues, surely. Think again. Your loudspeakers have crossovers. They separate out two or three frequency bands, capacitors, inductors, delays, and then the signals mix together as they come out of the drive units. And are the drive units time aligned? <laughs> One more, two more, and back to actual sound rather than signals. Let's imagine a mono signal coming from your two loudspeakers. Same signal, mono. You're in the dead center, perfect listening position. No phase issues? Oh dear. There's a path difference from your left speaker to your left ear and your right speaker to your left ear. Do you see why I'm having difficulty with this? <laughs> Similarly for your right ear. <laughs> Signals mixing with delayed versions of themselves. Phase issues. You're listening on headphones. Don't worry. Oh, sorry. I mean, do worry. What about sound... <laughs> what, about, what about sound passing directly through your head? It's inverted in the far ear to start with because it's pushing on the back of your eardrum. And then there's the delay caused by the width of your head. <laughs> Actually, this headphone phase issue is probably debatable, and I'm sure you'll debate it in the comments. Is there some way of conducting an experiment? Now, here's a thing that it would be really interesting to debate in the comments. In this video, I've said that phase issues are caused by a signal mixing with a delayed version of itself. I can think of a few more problems that it wouldn't be unreasonable to describe as phase issues. Maybe there are loads of problems that can be classified as such. Come on then! What phase issue troubles you that I haven't covered here? Tell us what it sounds like and how it's caused. See you soon. I wonder, Betty, why it is that Phil never seems to talk about phase issues. Surely if there's such a problem, he'd be going on about them all day long. As I understand it, Debbie, Phil spent a lot of time meditating on top of a mountain. He has learned the ancient skill of modulating the distance between his eardrums so that he hears everything in perfect phase. Mamayam kameva sadharmiyam nisabdam astiyat.